it's, it's so strange to start talking to a camera as opposed to talking to you. And in a sense, I really have to put myself in the room with you. Something Marjorie said to me last when I left Los Angeles. She said, just imagine you're in the room. And uh, so that's what I'm doing. The most fascinating thing for me as a spiritual teacher is seeing how unspiritual most lives are. And that even people who are sitting regularly seem often not to have a clue to what they're really doing. I got an email recently from an old student asking me for professional advice. I often get them asking for personal relationship advice. And I keep saying, why are you using me for that? I have so much more to offer. Why do I have to tell you how to settle arguments with you and your partners, both professional and romantic? It seems like you can handle that. You're grown up. That's, that's the world. That's regular day-to-day -day stuff. What I'm trying to teach is something else how to be you. And it's kind of crazy because most people don't know that. Most people don't know how to be themselves. They're very good at being a projection of what they would like to be, of presenting something that will make other people like them or feel good about being with them that won't get them in too much trouble. We're very good at the, some people call it the puppet that we present to the world. But we're not so good at just being us. And the journey from being the puppet to being yourself is really about that far a distance. I mean, Rudy, I would have said this to Rudy. I, in fact, one day I said to Rudy, Rudy, I feel this, sh this deep. And he said, put your fingers together. The shallowness of most of us, the lack of depth, the lack of ability to get from here to here is shocking. The distance we have to travel takes that long, and yet it takes lifetimes. There's really nothing to it, and yet a whole life is spent not doing it, avoiding it, looking in all the wrong directions, being truly, truly lost. And there's an enormous pain in that, really suffering, because we feel inauthentic, we feel cut off from our reality, from our own truth. We want something real in our life, and yet we run toward the unreality. Spiritual practice is really just sitting still. Spiritual practice is a kind of disengagement from the illusory, fictional enchantment of daily life. Not that daily life is really fictional or delusional, nor is it always enchanting. It is real, but we're not. So we don't live real lives in a place of reality. We live unreal lives, lives that we make up, that we use to survive. We create the fiction of ourself, not entirely, I mean, there's certain parts of us that are very real, and we have moments, clearly, of deep honesty with other people, deep compassion, empathy. We often have that empathy for ourselves and really get down to some kind of underlying truth. But it tends to be fleeting. Those moments of truth are important because we know they're real. 
They're important because they give us a glimpse of what reality is. Reality is just truth. What is? That's all it is. But it's not an interpreted truth. It's not digested. It is absolute, immediate, this is it, truth. This is what we're living. There is nothing else. But even as I say that, many of you are sitting thinking about what I'm saying. What does he mean exactly? Or you're interpreting it. You're giving it like three dimensions of, of analysis rather than just hearing it. Because the interpretive nature of the mind is so strong that it doesn't allow truth to enter without being in some ways analyzed, judged, interpreted. And as soon as we do that, it's already other. It's not true. Truth, truth feels like, ah, ah, ah. That's what it feels like. Or, of course, of course. That's all it is. It doesn't feel like, oh, yeah, well, uh, yeah. oh, yeah, right, I get it. No. If you get it, you don't have it. Getting it is not truth. Getting it is the mind having something that blocks the truth from going through. Truth is not analyzed. It is not agreed upon. It just is. And that truth is there 24-7. And you are there maybe four seconds out of that 24-7. And most of those four seconds come when you're meditating. Because what happens when you meditate, which is very interesting, is not that you get something, but that you lose something. You lose for those four seconds or four minutes or four whatever it is, hours. You lose the interpretive, mindful, and analytical nature of yourself. You just are. Real meditation is not a gain of anything. It is a loss or a separation from the analytical mind, the interpretive mind. It allows you to just be in the moment. It's a freeing, freeing of you from yourself. Of course, these are all words and the words get confusing. Which self does he mean? <laughs> it goes into analytic mind. Which in my, in my higher self, my lower self, my middle self, my ego self, forget it. Simple stillness allows you to just be. And in that being, if you're lucky, you will realize that you, meaning the idea of you, is not there meaning that that which is trying to understand things is not there. That which is relegating things to good and bad, higher, lower, is not there. There's just nothing there except you. And that is amazing. It's just you. And that you doesn't have any boundaries. It doesn't even have your name. In those moments where you sit really still, you falls away, the, the you of your memories, the you of your projections, the you that is hoping to survive, to have a future, to be wealthy, to be loved, to be everything, the you that is recalling all the traumas of your past life and all the things that were wrong in your life, all that's gone. What remains is what has always been there. This, you can call it an emptiness or a fullness, but it's just this. That's all that remains. And when it's not interpreted, you experience it for what it is. And it has an essential, words are not good here, but joyfulness, yes. A, a kind of assent, consent to what is. 
you just go, yes, yes. I've sometimes referred to it as okayness, because it isn't necessarily ecstatic. It may be when you first experience it. But what it is, is as it should be, as it should be. And there's something wonderful about that. And every so often, you sit down in the midst of as it should be, and your heart opens, and your mind opens, and your gut opens, and you feel the wholeness of that. And it is a wondrous state. It's wondrous. I walk down the streets of London in a state of wonder. Constantly learning. Everyone I look at, every building I look at, every time I have to look both ways to cross the street so some cab doesn't run over me, every second I realize how alive I am. And I walk into the rehearsal hall for the, for the musical and I go, how did I get this lucky? This is real. And I watch these unbelievable creative talents working at the top of their creativity all contributing in this really egoless way for this thing to come alive. And I know that this thing that's coming alive wants to be alive. It is already alive. It just wants to be. And I watch that happen. And every so often it requires me to be part of it. Me being, let's say, Bruce or someone who originated this thing to the degree that I originated it. I, you know, even that I'm not certain of. But it arose through this body-mind, and I get to be there watching it happen. And it's the most remarkable thing. Now, yes, this is a special experience. It's a specialized moment in life, and I get to, luckily, see it for what it is. But the important thing to understand, getting out of bed in the morning, washing your face, drinking a glass of water, brushing your teeth, having your orange juice in the morning, your cup of tea or your cup of coffee, they're just as special. They're just as amazing. And the fact that you are able to have those moments is extraordinary. To recognize that those moments are happening is more extraordinary. To go through an entire day and not to recognize anything of the miracle of your existence is unbelievably sad. It is a miracle that you are sitting there right now listening to this talk. It is a miracle because what is speaking to you right now is the highest of your own voices. This is your own inner truth coming to you through a TV screen or a computer screen. It's just talking to you. It's talking through this voice. It's, <laughs> these eyes are looking at a, at a camera lens, but you're, it's not working that way. This is something else. There's a truth here that has nothing to do with anyone or anything. It just is happening. It's arising. And it's arising in this body-mind at the same moment that it is arising in you. And if you can sit there right now without any kind of thought in dealing with this or wanting to take notes or write it down to remember it. If you can just be with this, you're being with yourself. You're hearing yourself speaking. This is what yourself sounds like. And whenever I talk to other awakened people, they sound just like me. Same, same voice, same thing being spoken. And the thing that's so extraordinary is how much each of us loves hearing it. We love it because it's all we want to talk about, because it's directly addressing the truth of this moment. And the truth of this moment is the greatest joy imaginable. It's all there is. And if you're in another moment as I'm speaking to you now, then you're missing it. If you're sitting here worrying about the fact that your foot's falling asleep, or that you're tired, or that you're hungry, or that you're worried about tomorrow, you're missing it. Why miss it? Just be here. What's the urgency of tomorrow? What's the urgency of the next moment? What's the power of the past that should pull you out of this? 
It's only power that you give it, and you have the capacity through this practice of meditation, which is really a learning. It's a learning to let go, to detach, to separate from the pull of the future and the pull of the past. Just let it go for these little tiny moments. This elasticity of relaxation, this elasticity of being. Just let all that stuff go, and you just relax in this moment, and then at some point, pop, it snaps. It just snaps. There's no elastic anything. It just goes. Past, future, gone. And there you are. And then you just live like this. You just live moment to moment. You don't fear the future because you're not thinking about the future. You don't anticipate it or grow excited or worried. You just, there, you know, you don't get involved. The past, you can look back at it if you want and enjoy it. Future, you can look at it. Sometimes you have to if you have to make reservations for something. But it's not important. You do what you have to do in the moment. You live this life in the moment. And it's wonderful. It's completely wonderful. So, in a way, this is a sales pitch for living this wondrous existence consciously. I have nothing else to sell. I have nothing else to tell you. I tell you the same thing week after week. For some reason, you keep coming back. I assume you keep coming back because something in you wants to hear this. I, in truth, know that's to, I know that's what's happening. There's a hunger in every human being for this. But boy, oh boy, to get the message through, that's tricky. Getting this message through is hard. Most people don't have the time or the inclination to listen. And so you walk through your day-to-day -day life and you watch people ignoring the truth, unaware of the truth. And what are they doing in place of it? They're suffering. They're trying to get things they can't have. They're wishing they had things that they don't. They're unsatisfied, or they're totally satisfied in the moment and they don't want to lose it. But whatever it is, it's not, it's not what you're looking for. Not that you can't do and have everything in the world. The world is here to satisfy, and the world will satisfy a lot. But it won't satisfy based on having gotten what you want. It'll satisfy based on having gotten what is. And this is what is. I guess I could go on forever <laughs> talking about the same subject and making different metaphors and different idioms to try to help break through the thickness in, in your heads and certainly what was always in my head. But this is it for this week. This is the, uh, the, the attempt to break through for this week. And I'll try again next week and the week after that and until I drop dead, <clears throat> which is okay. You know, it's all I want to do. It gives me more joy than anything. And I'm even creating a musical that taps into this a bit. It will actually create joy and love for being in the moment and for being alive. What greater thing is there to work on? Do the thing that's arising in you. Live the thing that is you. Love the life you have. Accept the pain. Accept the struggle. Accept the things you don't like. Stop fighting what is. Stop fighting what is. Just be with it. The entire secret is acceptance. Surrender to what is. Yes to what is. That's all there is. So, try it. See how it goes. I love you all. Beyond, beyond your ability to understand.